Hello friends, music lovers, Wes here checking in to do my, uh, my, my musical discoveries for the month of December, uh, December 2013. This is my first video I'm filming in 2014. Happy New Year everybody. I hope you all are, are doing well. hope you had a, had a wonderful uh, New Year's uh, celebration. Look forward to a lot of great things uh, happening in, in uh, 2014 uh, musically and, and otherwise. So, I uh, just wanted to share with you some of the things I picked up in the month of December. Kind of an interesting month. Uh, and I wanted to talk about some books and some CDs and just, just a little bit more of a, a general thing as well as some vinyl I, I purchased in during the month. Uh, December, you know, I'm out doing Christmas shopping for my family and friends and it's it's hard not to buy things and it's a month when I buy a lot of CDs for myself pick up sort of albums that I that I heard about throughout the year that I wanted to hear or just new releases a lot of a lot of new releases come in that sort of fall fall time period late in the year uh, so I just wanted to share a couple of those with you and and talk about them I know, normally don't talk about CDs here on the channel and I want to I want to try to work some, uh, occasionally work some more of those in here and there because I n realized in my best of 2013 uh, video, uh, at least a third of those were albums that I purchased on CDs that I hadn't, I hadn't talked about in the past yet. And and yeah, I'm not, I'm not totally strictly only vinyl. I, I buy CDs of some things. Uh, so anyways, before I ramble on anymore, let's go ahead and get into it. First thing I want to talk about, uh, I've been wanting to read this book for a while. It came out a little over a year ago. Uh, but this is David Burns, How Music Works. Had this on my Amazon wish list forever. And I was at the library, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, just browsing around in the in the music section. And I noticed that they had they had this book. And I was like, well, I guess I can just check it out from the library and read it. So been been getting into this a little bit. It's a little bit drier than I was expecting. Uh, but it's good so far. I hope it hope it starts moving forward a little bit faster. Uh, as I get into it more, but uh, definitely a an interesting book and an interesting way to look at music from from a, a musician's standpoint and somebody who has done very commercial st music and very uh, very experimental kinds of music. So uh, been reading that a bit. Uh, picked up a few other books uh, when we were at the at one of the local Books a Million bookstores. I uh, got Clarence Clemens autobiography, Big Man. Thought I'd grab this. This was one of the I one from the clearance rack. It was two bucks, so I definitely wanted to grab that. Has a lot of photos and stuff in it as well, uh, so that should be good to read at some point. And then I got this other cool book, Memories of John Lennon. Uh, these are sort of short, one chapter or maybe even just a poem uh, each. Uh, from different people who had he interacted with during his life, uh, so people telling stories of, about John Lennon. So uh, you get like Joan Baez, uh, Harry Benson, Chuck Berry, James Brown, David Geffen, just a lot of different Mick Jagger here. It just goes on and on and on. A lot of different. Uh, a lot of different stories and there's some artwork in here and a, re a really cool looking book and uh, that was 3.97 for that so that was that was cool for $4 uh, really cool to be able to sort of pick this up from time to time and read a story from from one person who uh, had some sort of interaction with John Lennon during his lifetime another cool pickup something I can sort of read one thing at a time and not necessarily have to stick with so that's always really nice so I did get a few things, uh, a few pieces of, of VCLT for the holidays. Wanted to talk about those. Wasn't sure which ones of these I talked about or not. Got a Christmas card here from the teacher, Robert. Uh, hasn't made videos in a while. Uh, he's a school teacher, so he's very, very busy, and especially during the school year. Sometimes you get a couple videos from him in the summertime, so that's cool. I sent him some, some box tops to help out with his... his uh, school and he sent me that cr nice christmas card so thank you for that robert if you happen to be watching that got a krampus card here from andreas the grecian thunder uh up there in the pacific northwest uh it's it's been raining here for the past three days so it kind of feels like the pacific northwest here but uh rainy and cold uh and for start of the new year here 
Uh, but thank you for the for the nice Krampus card on Christmas card and whatever you want to call it. I hope you had a, a wonderful uh, Christmas season. Uh, enjoyed watching some of your Christmas videos and seeing your decorations and whatnot. That was, that was pretty awesome. So I uh, look forward to seeing a lot more from you in the new year. Uh, I got a the holiday mix from Kevy Metal. I uh, got his Christmas mix last year, Christmas music for people who don't like Christmas music. Uh, this year he did a mix that is called a nightclub Christmas, and it's, it has a very sort of 20s and 30s nightclub sort of vibe to it. Uh, very sort of jazzy, loungy kind of Christmas music. Really cool stuff here. You got Fats Waller, Butterbean, Django Reinhardt, uh, Bessie Smith, Johnny Otis, Duke Ellington, Louis Prima, uh, Lionel Hampton. Uh, a lot of really cool sort of interesting Christmas music and other thing you know Christmas music that you don't traditionally hear uh, but that is really nice so I'm always appreciative of having this and I listen to I listened to both last year's and this year's several times this year during the holiday season so thank you for that Kevin also I may have talked about this or I'm not sure just wanted to mention it uh, received a nice Christmas mix from Trish thank you Trish I uh, also enjoyed this one quite a bit this year a lot of great great music on here as usual Trish really mixes things up a lot and no boundaries at all just uh, all over the place to get really classic Christmas music you get some really modern kind of stuff uh, just really cool interesting stuff so thank you for that Trish okay so getting into some of the CDs I bought in the late uh, November early December kind of time period the holiday season when I was out doing Christmas shopping uh, picked up Britney Spears new album Britney Jean pretty good not her best uh, I enjoy I enjoy it somewhat I liked her previous album better than this I think but uh, it's good to hear new new music from Britney uh, Britney's mu music is kind of like just you know fast food kind of music for me you know just something every once in a while you just want to gotta hear it gotta have it so it's it's fun to buy these and, and listen to them now and then uh, I got a Christmas album from James Brown uh, this is an I from the icon series uh, from Polydor. I don't know if this is just one of his particular Christmas albums that they sort of re released or if it's just sort of a compilation. Uh, but just a bunch of Christmas music from James Brown. I thought that was that was an, an interesting uh, thing to add to my Christmas music collection. I uh, really enjoyed listening to that this season. I uh, went ahead and ordered the soundtrack to Fly Over Country, the soundtrack that Derek did uh, a bunch of the uh, instrumental pieces for uh, his ambient instrumental uh, sound work kind of stuff uh, but also has has several bands on here I really enjoyed listening to this and hearing a lot of local Omaha bands I guess are on here I uh, just picked this one up a couple days ago so I haven't even really had a chance to completely ex completely get into it I've listened to most of it um, but this is the new album from Childish Gambino because the internet this cool sort of I don't know if it's going to show up on camera but it has like a lenticular cover on it which is pretty neat and then it opens up this sort of really cool psychedelic artwork almost but good interesting hip-hop album one I didn't hear uh, as I said in my best of uh, 2013 I thought I was thought 2013 was going to be the year of hip-hop for me and it didn't work out that way so I'm going back and listening to some more things that I didn't catch on to, uh, and this was just recently released, I think, anyway. But uh, good so far. Uh, I picked up the 10-year anniversary uh, edition of the Postal Service's Give Up. This was recently re reissued by Sub Pop. They have a really cool 3LP vinyl set uh, that I've been lusting after a little bit. Just to, can't bear to break to pay the price for it. And I saw this. Um, two CD set at Best Buy of it for I think it was $11.99 or $10.99 uh, really good price and I went ahead and grabbed it it's really nice packaging uh, you know has like sort of a book like just like the vinyl uh, reissue with the different artwork in here and several different uh, couple different booklets and two CDs the first CD is the the original album and then the second CD are outtakes and remixes and stuff so uh, really cool to be able to experience this album. This is something at the time when it came out 2003 I was not really tuned into the independent music scene so I didn't never really heard this when it was new. This is only something I've been getting into recently. So 
Postal Service give up 10 year anniversary package. Really cool, uh, you know, pick up on CD if you can. It's, it's not very expensive to get on CD if you can't afford the, uh, the vinyl reissue of it. Uh, and the last CD I got here I want to talk about is uh, the new live uh, release from Neil Young. This is live at the cellar door. I believe this is from 1970. Yeah, November 30th to, to December 2nd at 1970 at the cellar door in Washington, D.C. Just a pretty pretty simple packaging here, or just a single disc, not too much in the way of liner notes or anything, uh, but just an interesting concert from him. He's very, very young at this point, uh, 24 I think is how, how old he was at this point. Definitely a very a different Neil Young than we're, we're, we've, used to been, we've been used to hearing in the past uh, recent years, so but it, it was an enjoyable thing to hear and this is another one where not gonna pay the the price that, that Neil wants for his vinyl but you know at Best Buy you can get this CD for 10 bucks so that's definitely a, a nice pickup okay so moving on let's talk about some vinyl here finally uh, as I said in my best of 2013 I sort of discovered Boards of Canada this year and you know they just recently reissued their catalog on vinyl and I want to be able to pick some of these up at least. So the first one I picked up here to add to my collection is one I see most people saying they like the best or one of the best highly rated ones from Boards of Canada. This is Music Has the Rights to Children. Um, I'll go ahead and pull it out of here so it won't be so, so much glare here. Uh, really nice uh, heavy packaging on these. It has the, uh, the Braille, uh, which this actually says... Um, Oh, it's a scam. This says scam supposedly, which is the the label it was on uh, from 1998. Two LP set. So that was a nice uh, the first addition to my uh, my uh, Boards of Canada catalog sort of series, I guess you could say. You know, other than this year's release, this is the only other one I have right now. I'm looking to add some more throughout the year before those go out of print um, and another thing I got another band I, I love and I'm sort of going back and trying to get more of the, their catalog is the Flaming Lips this is Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots this one was from 2000 I believe 2002 2002 is when this one was from um, but yeah Flaming Lips inner sleeve with some artwork and lyrics and just great music and really enjoyed adding this one to the collection. This is something I've had digitally for a while, and just want to want to add more, get more of these on vinyl. Uh, picked up a few things here from my father. He does some some uh, buying and selling at flea markets and whatnot, and bought a crate of of records at one point just because he wanted the crate. Uh, I guess it was some sort of antique uh, sort of citrus crate or something I don't know exactly what it was but he wanted the crate and the, the whole thing uh, was filled with records and he had to you know buy the records as well and there wasn't really anything good in the records it was a lot of you know big band kind of stuff you know the readers digest compilations and big band and things like that but there's a few things in there I, I pulled out just to grab uh, Charlie Daniels band windows this has still in Saigon on it Charlie Daniels Band album I didn't have. I got Johnny Cash, The Singing Storyteller on Buckboard Records. Uh, I don't know anything about Buckboard, but probably one of those record labels that sort of licenses recordings from live shows and presses them. Sort of a, a gray market sort of uh, music label, I guess you could say. And then another D Charlie Daniels Band album here. This is just uh, self-titled. Another one I didn't have. Okay, moving on, another uh, an online purchase I made this month. This came from Dr. Dead Wax's Inbox Challenge Series 2 that he did this year, uh, 30 days, and he did five albums each day uh, that people chose numbers for. He pulled out of his inbox, cleaned them up, and listened to them. Uh, kind of where I got the idea for my Survivor Series from. Uh, but this was one he features on the last episode, I believe, and one that sounded really interesting and one I wanted to hear, and I... Uh, sought it out and found it a record store actually down in Orlando had this and it was a pretty good price So I went ahead and ordered it and it showed up a few days later because it only had to come from Orlando uh, But that's the the sea in the cake the moonlit butterfly. This is uh, 2011 on thrill jockey records 
cool. And he uh, he compared this to a tortoise a little bit. And it does definitely does have a, a tortoise kind of sound to it. I don't really know tortoise that well. I only have one album from them. Uh, but this has sort of that uh, indie rock sort of sound as well as a bit of a, a glitchy sort of sound work to it. The, the last track on each side has sort of a just a, a very glitchy sound work kind of or sort of a glitchy sound work kind of piece that has no lyrics uh, but very interesting group and I really enjoyed hearing this and as uh, Mark said this is a very nice pressing sounds really good really quiet so uh, that's definitely a, a nice pleasant thing and so that's the the sea and the cake the moonlit butterfly Okay, getting down near the end here. The last couple things I want to talk about are Christmas presents. I actually got some vinyl for Christmas this year. A, I believe this is the first time I've gotten vinyl for Christmas, so that's pretty nice. And I actually got a, a piece of a new piece of gear here, uh, something I've had on my Amazon wish list for a while and just haven't bought. And this is a stylus force gauge, digital digital stylus force gauge. LCD readout on it and it's it's very thin so you can use this uh, I just basically removed the rover mat from my uh, turntable and used this to be able to measure the uh, stylus force uh, measures to hundredths of grams so that's very nice I've been using a jeweler scale that I had to remove the actual platter from my turntable to be able to use you want to, you want to be able to measure the force of the stylus as it would be sitting on the record so it can't be too high or too low it has to be right at the right level um, so that's a new piece of gear I got glad I was able to add that to my toolkit and the piece of vinyl I got for Christmas something I've wanted forever and ever and I've been searching for and the search is over but that is Miles Davis's Bitches Brew this is the music on vinyl reissue of this classic Miles Davis album, Fusion album, great stuff. I listened to this a little bit. It needs to be cleaned. It's kind of dirty. <laughs> it's one of those uh, new reissues that are that come from the factory dirty. So I'm waiting for actually my new batch of inner sleeves. This is supposed to be delivered today. So I'm waiting for that to come so I can uh, clean some records. Uh, this one in particular. Uh, so that was quite a long episode, I'm sure. Sorry it took so long, but hope you enjoyed it. I just wanted to talk about a lot of things. and So I just want to touch on the, the vinyl community and the drama that's been happening recently a little bit here at the end. And I just want to say, just, just show the music you love. You know, Don't, don't worry about what other people think of it. Uh, if, you, if it's something you love, then people are going to want to watch it. And there's, you know, there's no matter how much people badmouth you, there's people out there that haven't heard those albums that want to hear about those albums that maybe want to be inspired to check out those albums. So yeah, just enjoy making videos, enjoy talking about the music that you love. Uh, it doesn't matter how commercial or how obscure it is, you know. I just I talked about a Britney Spears album and a, and a Miles Davis album, and and we talked about James Brown and the Postal Service and. It's, it's all good music. It doesn't matter. Music is meant to be fun. It's not supposed to be something that's so serious and, you know, it's got to be this way and all anything else is crap. You know, it's 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 all good. It all has its place in the world and uh, I, I love it all. And uh, I enjoy watching everybody's videos and seeing their passion and learning about the music that they love and it inspires me to check those things out. So thank you all for making videos and commenting and interacting and and just keep doing what you love don't worry about what other people think and enjoy yourself so have a great 2014 thank you for watching please subscribe see you again soon cheers